Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We are excited to present the new solution for rapid shutdown and beyond with NEP plus CPS. All right, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Anton Patton. I'm an applications engineer with CPS and have been with the team for a little over two years now. I'm based in Northern California and work closely with our key customers in the Western US. My role at CPS is mainly to be a technical resource for CPS products and solutions to help our customers with their solar and storage projects. From answering technical questions, finding ways to optimize our product applications, as well as finding ways to develop new solutions and improvements to best meet our customer project needs. And prior to working at CPS, I had technical roles with project developers and, and EPCs in the CNI solar and storage industry. I'll give just a quick introduction to Chint Power Systems or CPS America. CPS is a leading solutions provider for CNI solar and energy storage projects and has kept the number one market share for three phase string inverters in the CNI sector since 2015. We've now shipped over four gigawatts of UL listed inverters with more than 85,000 inverters for the US market. In addition to our success in the US, we've also, we're also backed by our parent company, the Chint Group, which is a large diverse energy company. The Chint Group is a global publicly traded company with over $9 billion in revenue and has been in operation for over 30 years. So you can be confident that CPS is a bankable, bankable company you can count on. Here in North America, we've primarily focused on the three-phase string inverter market, but have now expanded to become a complete energy solutions provider for solar and storage projects. With our sales, engineering, and service team located across the US, CPS is highly focused on service for our customers, from pre-sales and engineering support to logistics, order fulfillment, and support through the life of our product. In today's webinar, I am joined by NEP, who will introduce their new module level rapid shutdown solution. We'll go over the PVG4 product features and benefits that do go beyond just rapid shutdown compliance. We also have a special guest from Invalion who will go over their case study installation. And then I'll show the certified complete solution bundle offered by CPS. We'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. You should see a Q&A button on your screen. So please use that to submit any questions you have during the webinar and we'll try to get to all of them. And with that, I will pass it to Jing. Jing, it is all yours. Thank you, Anton. Uh, the, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jing, and I graduated from the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. That was many years ago. Uh, after my graduation, I spent uh, seven years at uh, GE Corporate, six, six or seven years at GE Corporate R&D in uh, Schenectady, R uh, New York. Then the, after GE, I worked for several companies, uh, but all in, uh, in the area of power electronics, like capstone turbine, air environment. And my last company before AEP was, uh, was Zantrax. I'm the co-founder of uh, AEP. Uh, next slide, please, Anton. Yeah, this is, I'll give a, a very brief introduction about AEP. AEP was founded in 2010. And then the uh, now we are focusing on more like L MLPE products like micro inverters, rapid shutdown solution, and uh, monitoring software. Uh, AEP has the only certified micro inverter uh, in Japan market. So pretty much we are the only one certified micro inverter in Japan market. Uh, so far, the, our products uh, ship over uh, 25 countries. Uh, we focus on uh, safety reliability, cost efficiency, and uh, 
uh, customer focused innovation. Uh, AEP is a B Corp. To be honest, I don't know too much about this. And um, our headquarter is, uh, is in the US. We are in San Jose, California. Next page, please. This is the, our RSD. I think, uh, I, I, I think most of you know uh, what RSD is. So today I will, I will pretty much, I think I'll focus on to tell the difference between our RSD and the, the other RSD on the market. So our, this is the typical RSD we offer to the to, uh, to US market. This, is a, this RSD is designed for four panel input. Uh, you, can, you can see you have four panel input. And then this RSD is, um, uh, we call that PV guard. Uh, this is, uh, compared to the regular RSD, this RSD has several unique features. Uh, that's really the RSD plus. Uh, the, um, it has uh, over temperature function. This over temperature function is, uh, is for whole site, uh, whole site protection. Then the, uh, it, of the, the whole system is driven by a power line communication carrier, PLC control and monitoring. And uh, then the uh, then the this uh, this has the uh, this uh, RST has a very unique feature called IV curve trace and testing. This IV curve trace is um, uh, the this will allow you allow you to do uh, to do much easy IV curve trace and testing. Then the next portion I'll talk about the uh, PV PV module interconnection options. Next page, please. And, uh, Thanks, Jing. And yeah, we're calling this solution the RSD plus because it does have a lot of these added safety and advanced features um, that go beyond just rapid shutdown. If you look at the, this is our data sheet. If you look at the data sheet, the data sheet is more like the, uh, uh, it is uh, look like the, the other, the other RSD data sheet is uh, like the input voltage is 90, 90 volts and uh, the maximum system voltage, the certified system voltage is 1500 volts. And then the, uh, uh, all the other part, I don't see, uh, you know, pretty much they're, they're, they're almost like the other RSD, but uh, then the, let's go to the next page and I'll, I'll show the, pre, the the comparison table here. This is the compar comparison table between the AEP RSD and the other RSD. Uh, this will be, um, uh, this table will tell you the difference between the uh, AEP uh, PV guard and the other RSD. If you the communication wise, uh, we use two way communication and the other RSD uh, use one way communication. The, the IV curve trace, you know, IV curve trace is, uh, is very, is very common. It has to be used for almost every CNI uh, site. So the whenever for the other RSD, whenever you do IV curve trace, you need to open up the string. Once you open up the string, then every RSD will turn off, then pretty much you get zero voltage. You cannot do the IV code trace test. Then for AEP, it's, uh, it will be much easier. You have, we have a special mode. We call that uh, uh, test mode. Once you set the whole system in test mode, uh, you, then the whole device, the, all the RSD is acting more like a mechanical device. That means the, um, uh, the RSD you can once you open up the string, the RSD can be preset as turn on or turn off by yourself. So if you set turn on, then you you when when even you when you open up the string, you still get the full string open circuit voltage. This will allow you to do the IV curve tra trace test much easier. The Tom will tell you more about this. Then the next feature we have is the. Um, uh, we call that the system shutdown. Uh, we can this our our rapid shutdown can shut down the whole PV site based on the temperature. Uh, all the other regular uh, rapid shutdown on market is uh, is manually turned off. Uh, then pretty much it's being defined it's being predefined by turn you know the rapid shutdown is predefined by uh, uh, to to be turned off by the firefighter. But if you really think the uh, you know why firefighter comes to your building to turn off the uh, rapid shutdown, that means that either you, the, this this building is on fire or people see smoke. So the uh, it will be we feel it's 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 too late then because the uh, if if people see see fire or see see smoke, it will be too late to turn that off. So what we do is um, uh, we 
we built a thermal sensor on each of our um, uh, RSD. That means the uh, every RSD will report to the transmitter the temperature condition. Uh, if any any RSD uh, reaches the certain temperature level, reporting to the reporting back to the transmitter, then the transmitter will send 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 installer or owner text message say, hey, the uh, uh, your site one two three panel one two three four is over temperature. Uh, you need to check. You have two options. You can either check or you can just leave it alone. If you leave it alone, the site will still continue to um, continuing operation. Uh, then, of course, the temperature may still climb. But once the temperature hit the second threshold, then the uh, the 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 the, the, the uh, you know the, the the overheated RSD will send another message to uh, to transmitter and the transmitter will uh, transmit will command the whole site turn off then you will receive another message saying the uh, uh, the site one two three panel one two three four is over temperature and hit the second the temperature threshold the whole site has been shut down and you have to to check outside so some message like that this is our second feature now the third feature we have is the uh, module level monitoring. This module level monitoring is the, the main purpose is not for the end user, is not for the home building, uh, for, for the building owner. It is for installer and for uh, maintenance people. So this module level monitoring will give you remote access to the, to the whole site. It's much easier for your troubleshoot. It's much easier for, uh, you know, for, um, uh, for you know, for for for, for you to do main, maintenance. Uh, by our experience, because we are in MLPE business for like almost ten uh, over almost ten years, then by our experience is the uh, any MLPE the module level monitoring for for maintenance is uh, is is absolutely necessary. Because uh, think about this: if you have a roof with like with like one thousand panels, uh, if you feel the the site does not perform well to you know to troubleshoot that will become a big job so this is the difference between our rsd and the other rsd and this that's why we call our rsd is more like rsd plus the next page please yeah. this is yeah this is the uh, typical uh, over temperature protection the over temperature protection we do here is that uh, we preset the default value is the temperature is like 100 degrees c if you this is um this is adjustable so this is uh, we this is much safer uh, per, uh, per, this is much safer uh, protection compared to the uh, passive protection. The uh, in addition to this, the um, we were told by uh, uh, by some of our customers is uh, all the data are very valuable for some condition like like Walmart Walmart case. This is very very important condition for them. So the as I said, the I, we give you two two you know we give you two alarms. Alarm one is more like warning signal. Alarm two is uh, is absolutely shut off. Then you you with that condition, um, you know the installer will have to go to go outside to check to make sure everything works fine. Next page, please. Uh, this is ID code trace uh, trace uh, trace past the. Uh, uh, you see here is uh, for when you when you you know when you configure when you commit when you configure the the uh, the, the CNI site, uh, you need to do IV curve trace test on every stream. Uh, for regular RSD, whenever you open up the stream, then each RSD will turn off. Then you end up almost zero volt zero volts at the end. So the meter cannot work. Then the uh, for installer they have to jumper wire. To you know, they have to jump around to make sure the vo voltage is there. Then they can continue their test. So in our case, as I said, the uh, uh, we give you a special button, and you put push the button to the to the test mode. Then the whole switch, whole RSD, will act will you know will act as a mechanical switch. Uh, you can define it's on. You can define it's off. That's really up to you. You can once you define it's on, you open up the circuit. Uh, you you know you open up the string voltage you still get the full string voltage. Uh, next page. Yeah, thanks, Jing. And I guess to clarify, you know, the PVG solution has uh, the mode that Jing mentioned where 
you're able to set it where you can use a third party IV curve tracer, a soul metric or a, or a C word to run the full IV curve scan um, with the module level devices connected. So great feature. Thanks, Shane. Thank you, Anton. Yeah, the next feature is the is the monitoring. Pretty much the uh, uh, this is the monitoring come with the with our transmitter uh, because we use two-way communication and uh, uh, this pretty much for every each you know for every site the you get the you get module level performance. Then the, uh, the we have we give you two different levels. Level one is for uh, you know for the for the end customer. The end customer will not be able to see the module level. The level two is for installer. Installer will will see the module level monitoring. Then in that case, then the uh, uh, if they want, they can pre map all those. Then just like Solar Edge, then in that case they can you know the for maintainers that's really easy for them. They can um, you know it, they can they can if anything goes any pan, particular panel goes wrong, they can see that right away. Go ahead, Anton. Yeah, this is the uh, module connection. This is the PVG4. This is the how we how we connect to the panel. It's kind of uh, straightforward. It's um, uh, this one can either the, the PVG4 can either be mounted on panel. On um, this PVG, uh, sorry, PVG4 can either be mounted on the panel or mounted on, on the on the uh, on the rail it's it it works both ways yep next page uh the uh, this is we're talking about our product in the us in the us uh, you know pretty much we uh, we keep two type of products the uh, pvg dash 4 dash l is our primary product uh, the we stock this product in uh, in our warehouse here in california in boston and then the uh, these are standard product with MC4 connector, um, but for many still for many users the uh, they use different solar panels, uh, and their solar panels may use different connectors like Amphino, like uh, TS4, like Quick, so like QC4. So then if that's the case, then we offer him the second uh, products, a configured product we call that. This one is uh, still stuck in the. Uh, the second one you see the picture here without any dc leads and this product is also stocked in the uh, uh in the us and then if you order this one you give us your you can you can give us your uh, specified dc cable length and dc cable cable connector we will ship these uh in two parts part one is the configured product without dc leads just like uh, the picture sh uh, showed then we will ship this one to your warehouse. Then the second portion will be shipped, the customized uh, DC connector and uh, uh, DC cable length will be shipped to your uh, job site uh, in, in about 10 to 15 days. This will meet, uh, this will meet your, uh, you know, this will, uh, by, by, by doing this, we can meet your uh, time, uh, you know, the lead time and your uh, uh, special requirements. This is more like customized uh, product. Uh, next page, Anton. Yeah, and, and what we've found with some installations, whether you have um, an inspector, you know, that is requiring um, the connectors to be the same, uh, which, you know, they should be, we can, like Jing said, have configurable cables for the PVG, um, depending on what module is being used. Right. Yeah, because the uh, our RSD is more is more like the is much we offer like several 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 unique features compared to the uh, uh, regular PV uh, regular RSD. So I feel our RSD is more towards the optimizer area. So that's why I put up another table to compare our uh, the RSD plus uh, versus uh, optimizer. Uh, if you really look at this, the communication. And the module level monitoring, they are both two ways. We they both offer module level monitoring uh, capability. Then the uh, if you look at component counts, then our RSD is much less compared to uh, optimizer. This implies the MTBF is much better because we have much less components. 
then that means the uh, MTB, MTBF value is much better. Uh, if, if you look at the heat, uh, the, you know, the uh, uh, RSD, our NEP RSD, the, the switch only turns on, turn, you know, they only turn on, turn off once per day. But optimizer, on the other hand, on the other side, optimizer, they turns on, turns off like 100,000 times per second. That's much, much more. So they will create more, much more heat compared to the NEP RSD. Um, our efficiency will be much, much better than optimizer. Then the, um, of course, the, if, uh, the, the reliability is, uh, um, is, is a lot better compared to opt optimizer. The, uh, the, only, the only difference is the uh, MPPT. I think MPPT is, we do not offer MPPT and the uh, optimizer of, they do have MP, module level MPPT function. But, so, but for CNI project, most of CNI project does not have any shade. So MPPT may not be an that mean, you know, is not, is not necessary too for, for, for those project. Um, on the other side, the price will be much lower compared to optimizer. Um, then the um, uh, system flexibility, if you look at, really look at the, uh, uh, like the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the optimizer pretty much they have to be dedicated to, to one very particular inverter. So system flexibility, we, we, our system flexibility is much, much better. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much I, uh, I have regard about our RSD. Um, I did not talk about generic RSD. I only, here, I only talk about the, uh, AEP, uh, AEP RSD versus regular RSD. Basically, we have uh, three unique functions we offered. Number one is the uh, is the over temperature auto shutdown, whole side off auto shutdown before fire or smoke. Number two is the IV curve trace test. Number three, that's option function. You can choose. It's very easy for you to get almost like a very low cost module level monitoring function. Uh, if you see, uh, if the, the maybe one additional one is we offer customized uh, DC lead lamp and uh, connector product uh, for you. So, yeah, I think the next one will be the case study. I'll, I'll give it to, to Tom. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jing. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Wu, I'm the CEO of Invalian uh, Technologies Corporation here in Massachusetts. Uh, I'm an engineer by trade. And a little bit about Invalian. Uh, we are an EPC and we're fully integrated. Uh, our primary focus has been on rooftop solar, uh, solar rays. And rather than go through the bregawatts, um, we, we've done a lot. And over the years, we've learned a lot, uh, made a lot of mistakes. And what we wanted to showcase is an archetype of a rooftop system. And uh, Anton, if you don't mind, uh, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, so we, you know, uh, like many EPCs out there, um, when we're given a project either from a developer or an asset owner um, to build, um, a lot of the times now the projects um, have inverters that already um, that are already approved and interconnect uh, approved for interconnection with utility. Um, so that was a big issue for us. So we wanted to make sure that when we, uh, when the code changed to 2017 and even to 2020 here in Massachusetts, we wanted a, an RSD device that's compatible with the inverter that's designated in the interconnection agreement. Um, secondarily, one of our biggest pain points, um, having worked with almost all of the RSDs that's currently on the market, is we wanted to make sure that before there is power to site or before the utility has granted permission to operate that we are able to commission and test not only just the RSD itself, but all the major components in the solar system. Um, that way we're not going in, flipping the switch and uh, blindly wishing for luck to happen. Um, and to the third and last point, uh, we wanted to ensure that there was a low, uh, low hurdle of adoption. Um, you know, we've, tuned our crews, our designers, um, everyone to installing with a certain product. Uh, when we made the change, we wanted to make sure that this didn't interfere with their process um, and that, you know, it didn't create any hassle on the, uh, on the job site. So one of the biggest emphasis that we found um, in value that we found from 
the NEP product was that ability to do the IV curve trace. Um, what that did was it was able uh, gave us the ability to demonstrate to the owners of the project that um, the uh, the solar system was installed per the specifications or the design uh, that was given to us. Um, in addition to that, uh, being able to do that, we were also able to do isolation tests uh, on the DC side to make sure that there's no nicked wires or pinched wires. Um, and one thing that, you know, a lot of people have failed to clearly demonstrate is, you know, with the new adoption of the code, how to clearly demonstrate that these devices achieve that function, the rapid shutdown function to uh, a local AHJ or inspector. Uh, and because of the way that uh, Jing had mentioned this being a mechanical switch, we were able to, you know, put a voltmeter on there, simulate um, or uh, start the rapid shutdown initiation device and actually show that the system de-energized um, per the requirement of the 2017 or 2020 code. Um, the, the project we're going to feature, um, like I said, it, it, it's, it's an archetype here in New England. Um, it's on a 10 degree racking uh, on a flat roof. Um, when we installed it, we didn't use any additional jumpers. Um, so for us, this was a very successful project. Uh, Anton, if you wouldn't mind, next slide. So here's some uh, typical <laughs> photos, but um, no, specific to, to our installation. Um, I won't go into too much detail on, on the exact specifications, but um, one thing that we were able to do was because of the, uh, the ability uh, of this rapid shutdown device, we were able to put the inverters um, on, on the ground level rather than having to be on the roof. Um, and that was um, prior to the full adoption of 2017. Um, a lot of the inverters were placed on the roof. That's not to say you can't do that, but from a service and maintenance perspective, this made it a lot easier. Um, so we're trying to always predict what, what the uh, longevity of the system would be like. Uh, Anton, next slide, please. And for us, like I said, the low hurdle of adoption was critical for us. Um, we wanted to make sure that when we installed these, since the device is a four to one, that we didn't need additional jumpers and that wire management wasn't going to be a mess. Uh, we did use two types uh, on this project just to try things out. Um, because of the landscape orientation of the modules, and uh, we mounted the, the MLPE to the module frame itself. Um, it was very easy to wire manage. We needed just a single uh, S-clip. And if, uh, in some instances, if there are places on the module frame, we were able to use zip ties as well. Um, I think that is, uh, that is pretty much it on my side. Thank you, Anton. Great, yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, thanks for going over your successful project there. It's great to see those photos um, of the system installed. All right, so we've introduced the NEP PVG4 product and shown the functionality and safety features. And now I wanna go over what we're doing at CPS to integrate the system on the inverter side. And one thing we've done is we've integrated the NEP controller um, in our inverter wire boxes to make the installation simple and easy so that no external components or enclosures or wiring are needed for the rapid shutdown system to work. So basically the DC strings from the array are connected to the inputs of the inverter in the wire box and the AC conductors are connected to the inverter output, just like string inverters have been installed for years. And since NEC 2017 and 2020 code allows fusing on just one polarity of the DC string inputs, we've, we've also increased the working space inside the inverter wire box to make installation in the field even easier for our customers. Now, here I wanted to show the components that make up a PV rapid shutdown system. So you've got the, the PVG4 devices that are connected to the modules at the array, and you've got the CPS inverters with the NEP controller 
and components integrated in the wire box. And those components send the signal to the PVG for devices for, for that two-way communication without any additional communication wiring. Um, and so the PVG devices, controller, and the inverters are all tested and certified as a system to meet rapid shutdown requirements, which is important. So since the NEC 2017 and 2020 code require conductors outside of a one foot boundary from the array to be less than 30 volts in 30 seconds of rapid shutdown initiation, the MLPEs and the inverter need to work together um, to make sure that the home run conductors shown here as the, the red and black um, connections from the array to the inverter, that those conductors meet those voltage requirements um, in the required time. All right, now you might be thinking, okay, what inverters will I be able to use with this NEP solution? So the NEP PVG devices are certified and listed as a PV rapid shutdown system with CPS 50 and 60 kilowatt inverters, the 25 kilowatt 480 volt and 25 kilowatt 208 volt inverters. And the CPS and NEP teams continue to work closely together to perform engineering and testing diligence to validate and ensure the reliable performance and compatibility of the components as a system. And not just for rapid shutdown functionality, but making sure these are field tested, no issues with you know, the operation of, of either component um, and that these systems are gonna be performing well. Um, the, these inverters are CEC listed as having the latest California Rule 21 smart inverter functions. So they can be installed in California, interconnected with the utilities, uh, and any state or jurisdiction that requires CEC listing, either for their interconnections or um, for incentive programs. Um, and Again, we have the integrated rapid shutdown controller in our inverters, uh, in our wire boxes, so no additional wiring or enclosures are needed. Also, as part of the complete solution that CPS offers, um, we offer our FlexOM data communications and control solution for our inverters. The card shown here that you see in the top right can have up to 32 inverters connected to it. So there's typically one card installed per site. This solution enables fast, efficient field service and allows things like remote diagnostics, troubleshooting, inverter setting adjustments, and even remote firmware upgrades which greatly reduces the amount of truck rolls needed to the site um, and amount of time to uh, make sure that the, the systems are up and running as they should be. Um, we've also, we also have a customer facing portal option available um, for our customers to, to view all the inverter data um, as well as 4G options that uh, are shipped with a cellular modem. So if you don't have an ethernet connection at the site, you can use that. And we are in the process, so CPS is working with NEP to integrate the NEP module level data into our FlexOM portal so that all the module and inverter data will be able to be monitor monitored on one platform. So in addition to the products, CPS also has an excellent service team to support 
our products and solutions throughout their lifetime. We, we have regional service technicians and engineers located across the U.S. to support our customers and their projects, both with pre-sales technical support, uh, as well as post-sales service. With the NEP plus CPS bundles, CPS can be the first call if you need any technical support as well as warranty support for, for the system and the products. And the key benefit with working with one supplier for the full system is you won't have any issues with finger pointing from different vendors, you know, especially which is especially important if you have components and different products that are working together. So CPS will support all of the products that we ship to our customers and uh, make sure that your systems are performing well. All right, to summarize the NEP plus CPS solution, which we're calling Rapid Shutdown Plus, uh, since it has the added safety and monitoring features that go beyond just rapid shutdown code compliance. Um, one, one feature of that is that um, up to four modules can be connected per device to reduce the system costs and minimize the amount of components at the array uh, if you're comparing to having one device per module or one device for, per two modules. Uh, another feature is the over temperature protection. So the automatic system shutoff that Jing mentioned um, that enables the system to initiate rapid shutdown automatically if a thermal event occurs and is sensed by the PVG devices on site um, without needing to activate a switch or for first responders to go to the site um, and initiate rapid shutdown. And so again, CPS offers the, the complete solution from the inverter, the PVG module level devices, uh, as well as the communication products. So, if you're wondering where you can buy these products, as I mentioned, you can work with the CPS team and we fulfill orders from our Pomona, California warehouse center. These products can also be purchased through our channel partners like Yaskawa Selectria for fulfillment and also through channel partners like CED Green Tech and Trina Solar. I will mention that if you are looking to have your project qualify for safe harbor to take advantage of the current ITC solar tax credit rates, a good option is to purchase the inverters and rapid shutdown equipment. Now, the, the end of the year is, is coming up quickly, so you'll want to make sure you get those orders in as soon as possible to um, lock those rates in. So that's, that's our presentation. Um, if you're interested in our products and if you have a, a project that this solution would be a good fit for, please reach out to our team at americasales at chintpower.com. My contact information is here as well if you want to follow up um, with any questions you might have. But we do have some time here um, to go through any questions you have um, on what we've discussed. It looks like we do have a few questions that have come in now, um, but if you, if you do have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A button on your screen, and we should be able to, to get through them here. All right. Well, thank you everyone for, for listening. Um, let me just go through these questions here that we have. All right.
right. Um, let's see. One question is, given the, uh, all right, given the common concern that more electronic slash MLPE on the roof equate to higher rate of failure, what is the failure mode of the PVG? Will the string bypass a failed unit? Um, good question. Uh, I guess Jing or yeah. Fan uh, from NEP, you want to answer that one? Yeah, yeah. The, I think that's a very good question. The, uh, the we we inside. If you really look at our RSD uh, inside, there is a bypass diode, just like the, just like the junction box apart. So if the main circuit fails, then the bypass diode will supply us. Uh, you know, a by, bypass route to uh, to 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 pass through the current, so it should be safe. Safe, safe, safe uh, it should be safe fail, safe failure. So it should not be a problem there. Um, let's see. Got it. Thanks, Jing. Um, another question we've gotten is the module level data stored. Um, so I think this question is related to you know being able to not only view the module label data but um, I guess have it stored and downloaded um, to use for you know diagnostics troubleshooting yeah for now the uh, the, the module level data is the uh, the AP has a server in uh, Texas you can uh, restore there then yeah, I think in the future, uh, CP, I think it's very soon CPS will we will have us uh, will have integration solu integrated solution. Then your data will be stored in a CPS server. Uh, you know, in addition, if you really want to, uh, you can actually you can download by yourself as well. It's a uh, it's very easy to download if you. Uh, we have uh, we can you can we we can supply a box for you. We call that gateway. Then that box can save can 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 store a lot of data for yourself. You can you can arrange a download by yourself as well. Yeah, thanks, Jing. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great feature there. Um, definitely being able to take a look at the stored data from the modules when you're um, you know looking at a site. If there is any sort of event, you can look back and see exactly what happened, which is Great, um, right. The especially point, with these rapid shutdown systems. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Anton. The, uh, maybe I should say uh, the data point is like one minute per data point. You will see a lot of data. Say if you have like thousand panels, you may have like thousand data per minute. You have a DC voltage, DC current, and um, and the local temperature there. You have pretty much you have three. Yeah, thanks, Jing. Okay. Um, looks like we have another question. Is the NEP slash CPS solution certified as either PVRSE or PVRSS uh, according to UL7041? Um, so, uh, yes, there, the PVG devices, the NEP devices are um, listed uh, with the controller and the inverter um, on a PV rapid shutdown system certificate um, as meeting rapid shutdown requirements according to UL 741. Okay, let's see. Another question. Uh, can measures be used to uh, when testing strings? Jing, you want to take that one? Yeah, sorry, can you repeat? Yeah. Sorry. I, did not, I did not hear you. Yeah, the question is related to testing strings when the PVG devices are, are connected um, uh -huh. and whether measures can be used to test. Uh, I, I don't quite understand the question. Measures can be used means? Yeah, so um, I guess, so we've, we've looked at this and the answer is, is yes, measures can be used in addition to um, using third-party IV curve tracers when the PVG devices are connected. 
um, you can you can also mega mega the strings as well. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. What? Uh, another question: What is the temperature range that the automatic thermal shutoff can be set to? Really depend on your by 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 install itself the, because different area they have the the reason the default temperature we set is uh, 100 degrees C. Uh, you in different area you really can set different temperature level. You can go like 80 degrees C or you can go like 120 degrees C. That's really depend on you. But the default I think we we set at 100 degrees C. Uh, normal in normal condition you never reach that condition. The you know if we by our test uh, in house uh, the temperature sensor even at the uh, 65 degrees C ambient condition that says that temperature sensor should can only reach like 70 to 72 73 degrees C. So one once it could reach 100 degrees C definitely is 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 not normal. And the uh, if uh, you know if the if the installer feels okay, I live in uh, in a desert, then the I want to go like one twenty degrees C. That's fine too. That's really depend. But of course, you cannot set to like two hundred degrees C. That would that would be too high. Right. And uh, Jing, setting the temperature, uh, I guess shut off threshold. That's done remotely, correct? Um, it can be you're able to access those those yeah. settings. Yeah, remote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that 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 threshold is uh, password protected. You can no, not everybody can do it. It's being there's a special password for uh, for 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 the setup. You can set up by yourself. Right. Great. Thanks, Jing. Um, Let's see, we've got some questions on, um, is there a separate wire from, from the NET devices to the router? Um, so, yeah, I guess I can start um, with the answer to that, Jing, and feel free to jump in. But um, okay. as far as the, the wires from the PVG4 devices at the array to the NEP controller that's integrated in the wire box, there's no additional wires um, no. there for the two-way communication. Um, but for the module level data uh, reporting to, to the portal, um, right now that does require uh, a separate uh, ethernet cable for the NEP controller, but that is something that our teams are working on integrating um, so that you would basically just have one connection and the communication uh, would send the data up to the CPS Flex OM portal for both the NEP devices and the inverters. That's correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. I think we've got. Um, Okay, another question. What if we have uneven strings um, that aren't a multiple of four? What what can we do? Um, so I think I can I can start, Jing. Um, so the the PVG four devices can have up to four modules connected to them. Um, so if one is unused or two are unused, you can just um, connect the the connectors to each other um, yes. and you won't need to use those but um, right. Jing maybe you want to go over um, there is a um, solution in in development um, okay for yeah. a three three module to one yeah yeah PVG, actually PVG we uh, we call that PG, PVG dash four it's it, it really can work with one module, single module two module three module or four modules is a uh, uh, in, you know, the, if you don't use, for example, if you have three modules, then you can, you can use uh, port one two three or one two one two four or one you know one three four. It doesn't matter. The uh, the unused module is just a, a short uh, unused module. That's it. It's very simple. Okay. 
Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, we've gotten some some questions on on pricing, which I don't think we'll go over right now. But I think uh, what we can say is that compared to other module level solutions in the market, uh, especially with you know allowing for modules for one device, um, there are definitely um, cost benefits there, and it's it's definitely a very cost competitive uh, solution for for rapid shutdown. Um, okay, I think we have gotten through most of the questions here. Um, Thanks a lot, Jing and Tom, for joining our webinar. Um, anybody attending, if you do still have questions or want to follow up, please feel free to reach out to our team. My contact is up on the screen, um, as well as our uh, sales contact, if you uh, want to reach out to our sales team as well for any of the products. Um, so great. Well, thank you all for joining our webinar today. Um, hope you found it uh, uh, informative and useful. I know you've probably gotten a lot of invites for webinars lately. Um, but yeah, thanks again. We appreciate your time and, and stay safe, everyone.